Hi and welcome to this tutorial with me Tim Clapham from hellolux.com and in this tutorial we're going to show you how to set up gobos in Redshift in Houdini and also how to set them up in Karma and if you want to follow along and use the same gobos that I do please check out the link in the description below and you can visit hellolux.com and download a sample pack of our gobo collection. So here we are in Houdini we've got a dome light set to blue which is why the scene looks very blue. I'm going to come up and add in a redshift light. This defaults to an area light. Let's select that light. And over here in the viewport, I'm just going to switch to this gizmo and manipulate this a little bit, move it around. So first of all, I'm going to move it up and rotate it. Let's make it a bit bigger, say five meters. Um, if we come to this side view, we can just lift that up above the ground plane. And if we zoom in, we can see the camera and let's just select that camera and there it is from the other two views so just to give us an idea of where our light is in relation to the camera itself okay so let's start the render view and have a look at what we've got and you can see that it's well it may be a little bit bright for now so let's set the intensity down i'm going to set that to 2.5 we've got this sort of dull gray look um, we have this option use texture here so i'm going to enable that rather than change the color here if we come up to the top there's a texture tab we can then load our texture in so I'm going to load in this leaves texture, which you can download from our site. Okay, and then we, we do see a slight change in result, but not really much use. So let's come back to our light, come down and under the shape, we can reduce the spread. This reduces the angle of the rays from the light. And you can see that at 0 0.1, we're starting to sh see the shape of our light. Let's set that to 0 0.01. Now we can start to see our gobo. If we pull the light closer to the surface, it will become sharper, but that might be a little bit impractical so we could even reduce that spread even lower and this is the angle so we can't go much lower than this um, it's not going to make too much difference but that looks pretty good to me um, maybe we'll just move it a tiny bit closer you can see that as we rotate it around the gobo moves with the light if we want to add light to this we need to do it under the texture adjust tab there's a multiplier here so if we just choose another nice warm orangey color we will see that multiplied over our gobo. Now you might want to layer up more than one image and unfortunately you can't do that this way because that texture slot only allows one texture but what we can do, let me just stop this render view, is if we select our light and scroll down we have this shader path here. So fold that down you can see that there's a light shader which is actually inside the light itself. So if we double click and open this up you can see there's our light shader but at the moment everything is locked so we need to right click on the light and choose allow editing of contents this will show us the um, lock is undone we can come in here we can open up the material and you can see we've got a regular sort of redshift vop net we open this up here is the texture sampler um, and here is a switch and if you look up here the switch is enabled if we come back to the object level select the light come down and disable use texture now when we come in here and have a look inside this VOPnet at the switch, it's disabled. So this switches between the texture sampler here, depending on this toggle on the actual light. So what we want to do is we want to just come up to the texture here. Let's reset this to the default values. So we've got white and let's remove the texture from here. I'm going to cut that. So I've got it onto the clipboard. Now, if we come back to our light, and let's come in here and manipulate this image. So rather than using this existing texture node that's on here, um, because if we select that, you can see that it's got expressions in it. Um, it's linking to the light parameters. What we want to do is just add a new one. Now we've got a regular Redshift texture node, so we can um, come up to the file name and load in an image. I'm going to load in this one, which is a sash window. Okay, and if we wire this into the second input of the switch, you can see there it is, the sash window that we're using. Let's start the render view and we should see the result of that in the viewport. There we go. Obviously the gobo is black and white, but we can easily just add a ramp in between to colorize that result. So if we add that in, select this second knot, and I'm just going to come down and make that a nice warm color. Somewhere around here, a bit more orangey. There we go. If we come to the texture node, we can adjust the scale in here. So we can adjust the um, size of our gobo and the position. You can see that it's tiling, but you can uncheck the wrapping option there. 
Um, we can also offset. The other way you would do this obviously is to select the light itself and to change the size here. So if you've only got one texture, both options work, but it will change the intensity. But what we want to do is actually layer up more than one texture. So let's duplicate this texture and I'm going to paste in the path from the leaves that we used before. And to combine these, we can use a redshift color layer. So if we drop that down, what we want to do is wire the ramp into the base layer and the leaves as layer one and put that into the switch. And now, of course, we can only see the leaves and that's because the layer one is active. If we disable that, we can see the window. But what we actually want to do is set the blending mode here to be multiply. So now we've got that in position, we are combining both of those textures. And of course, if we want to, we can come down and select the texture node for the leaves and we can adjust the scale, etc. here. So maybe we want to make them a little bit bigger or maybe we want to just move them a bit further down in the window. Something like, there we go. There we go. Something like so. So you can see you have a fair amount of control doing it this way. There is an alternative way you can do this as well. Let me just move this over so we've got a bit more room. And what I'm going to do is add in the UV projection node. If we drop that in between, you can see it instantly changes to this flat projection. But we can use that to our advantage depending on the result that we're after. So here what I'm going to do is just scale it up slightly. You can see it's a bit more cumbersome doing it this way, but maybe somewhere around there. We can rotate this. And because at the moment it's using world space, it doesn't align with the actual light itself. Um, let's just move this up. There we go, somewhere around there. So you can achieve a very similar result doing it this way, but there is a slight caveat to it. And that is, um, if you look closely at the edges, you can see that the actual UV projection, because it's using world space, it is perfectly sharp. So maybe you could have the window frame sharp and the leaves blurry. Um, so it does have its uses. Next, I'm going to show you how to set this up in Karma and you can see that we've moved over to Solaris. I have a dome light in here, very similar setup with a blue light and I'm just going to add in an area light and then let's select that and in the viewport let's grab the gizmo and just move this up, maybe rotate it around and pull it back a little bit, something like so. Now if we wire this into the merge and just press Shift P to start the Karma renderer, you can see not much difference. If we set the intensity a bit higher, let's go extreme 100 and see, there we go. So it is illuminating the scene. Now, if we scroll down under base properties, we've got this light filters option, and this is how you would add a gobo in Karma. So we need to add in a light filter library, drop that in the wire below the light. If you dive inside the light filter library and then search for gobo, you get the Karma light filter gobo. So let's drop that in and we're just going to use this one node for now. You can actually wire a map in there so you could create more complex setups. But let's just use this one node. At the top we have texture. I'm going to load in a texture here and if we just pull this over, let's load in the sash window that we looked at before. Now if you jump up a level, select the light filter library and in the parameters, enable assign to light. And then what we want to do is grab the area light and just drag that into the light path field. Now we've done that. We could have done it on the light itself here to apply the filter, but we did it the other way. If we come over to the view and press shift P to start the Karma renderer, we should see the result. And there we go. You can see we're getting some kind of result, but it looks very out of focus. If you come back into the light filters and select the gobo, you can actually change the intensity and exposure here. So let's set the exposure to be five. So it becomes a lot brighter but of course we still can't see any shape if we come up and select the light what we can do is we can make this a lot smaller and it will make it much sharper so if we set that to 0 0.1 you can see that now we can see the gobo itself um, we can just rotate this around a little bit and because we increase the intensity there it we can just about see it but it does still seem very dull so we can come back here and we can just set the exposure up a bit higher say three maybe make that a nice warm color as well. As far as I know in Karma, the only way to make it sharper is to adjust the size. If we move it closer, it doesn't make any difference to that focus. It just makes the gobo appear larger and smaller. So that is a very simple setup of using a gobo with Karma. And I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And as I say before, if you want to 
follow along with the same gobos, please use the link in the description below. And if you're a Cinema 4D user, head on over to the channel because there is an alternative version of this tutorial for achieving these results within Cinema 4D. So thanks very much for watching and I'll see you all next time.